welcome everyone. Um, if if you come up with any questions while I'm doing the talk, you can put them in the chat and Joan will field them. Uh, I don't know how many questions I can an really answer about Jenny Holzer, but I'll try. Um, I'm gonna try and let her speak for herself as much as possible because she's got plenty to say. And uh, as, as you can see, she fills museums. Um, so uh, this is actually a return to the Guggenheim. Um, not not a repeat of the 1989 show, but a new timely show. Um, it's a similar configuration to the show that was there in 1989, but of course, you know, there we're we're in a new time, and with the eminent election, I'm sure that uh, she'll have a very interesting slant on things. Um, there are a lot of artists who use text, uh, te text-based artwork, um, you know, pop art and conceptual artists. Not many that operate on the scale that uh, Jenny Holzer operates on. So we're gonna we're gonna dive in. And uh, so Jenny Holzer is an American neoconceptual artist, whatever that means, uh, based in uh, Husik, New York. Um, the main focus of her work is the delivery of words and ideas in public spaces and includes large scale installations, advertising billboards, projections on buildings and other structures, um, illuminated electronic displays, uh, that, and that's just, you know, basically um, theater marquees, um, uh, benches, buses, trucks, plaques, t-shirts, you name it. She's put stuff on it. So Holster belongs to a feminist branch of a generation of artists that emerged in the 1980s um, and was an active member of Colab during this time, uh, participating in the famous um, Times Square show. And I will talk more about that later. Um, Larry, what's Colab? Well, it, it's actually a group of feminist artists. So you... You'll find out more about that in a couple of minutes. <laughs> uh, Holster was born um, on July 29th, 1950. Um, I'm not even going to try and pronounce the name of that town in Ohio. Uh, um, originally aspiring to become an abstract painter. Actually, originally she aspired to become a lawyer went to, went to uh, school and decided that, that that was not for her. So she started painting um, general art courses at Duke University in, in Durham, North Carolina from 68 to 70. Then uh, printmaking and drawing at University of Chicago, completing her BFA at uh, Ohio University. Um, in 1974, she took summer courses at the Rhode Island School of Design and uh, entered its MFA program in 75. She moved to Manhattan in 1976 and joined the Whitney Museum's independent study program. And that really began her first work with language and installation in public art. In fact, from what she said about it, that was really when she began to find herself and um, was really engaged with a lot of, of uh, street artists and um, uh, kind of guerrilla um, installation pieces throughout the city. Um, Protect me from what I want. 
<laughs> a good halterism. Now, now there's a, there's a whole series, and we're gonna we're gonna move on to this. The single most powerful word in our democracy is the word "we." We shall overcome. Yes, we can. Um, so, let's see. This is this is on uh, projected on the side of the Hirshhorn Museum in Washington, and I believe it was in 2020. Now, in searching for herself in this Whitney program, she did hundreds and hundreds of these strange diagramic, uh, enigmatic uh, drawings. And they're, they're really interesting, intriguing. I have no idea what many of them mean, uh, but they do force you to kind of speculate about what the notions are that are behind them. Um, so the use of word and symbol was something that she was playing around with and trying to utilize at some point. Okay. So the truisms is where we really get into um, Holster, uh, uh, Holster's um, essential thing. I mean, these truisms have repeated themselves over and over again over the past 40 years in, in many of these pieces. She doesn't do, she actually stopped writing them herself in 1983 and began working with, with, um, with poets using collaborative uh, projects rather than using her own words. Um, she's humble in the face of, of, of what she thinks they do better. Um, but some of these things are really hysterical. They are contradictory. They are um, really kind of absurdist um, little statements. Um, Abuse of power should not should come as no surprise. That's one of her. That's one of hers that comes up now and then. Um, total submission can be a form of freedom. <laughs> the more you know, the better off you are. Well, okay. Um, chasing the new is dangerous. Um, Sometimes all you can do is look the other way. Sacrificing yourself for a bad cause is not a moral act. Her sense of, of, of humor is uh, self-awareness can be crippling. She's just got this really wry sense of humor. Um, drama often obscures the real issues. Okay, we're going to move on. There are so many of these, and it, she's she's got a great website, and she actually even has an app at this point that you can download. Um, so at this point, in her life when she was starting to operate out of the Whitney and all that, she began to take these pieces out onto the streets and and use wheat paste and and paste them up on on, on walls. Um, and part of this this Times Square uh, show, she got access to um, to some of the um, uh, LED billboards on on Times Square and posted some of her some of her truisms. Your oldest fears are the worst ones. Private property created crime. 
she's hysterical. So this is in the tradition of, of Dadaist poetry, okay? And Dadaism is um, a kind of um, early 20th century uh, rebellion against reason as a as a um, uh, a guiding tool to political and social life. Having gone through World War One and and uh, seen the results of of where social norms brought the world, the Dadaists rebelled against all of that. And and um, one of the roots of Holzer's work is the Dadaist poetry, photography, sculpture, painting, and collage. Uh, this this uh, visual poem. That, that you see in the upper left is by Hugo Bell, Hugo Ball, I believe. And he did these um, sound poems as a performance piece at Cabaret Voltaire, which is, is in Switzerland, uh, which is kind of one of the, um, the areas where Dadaism took root. Um, So, after she did she did the truism, she began to do these these um, crazy essays called the inflammatory essays, and they are full of 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 rage and kind of contradictory um, statements. Um, and and basically what what's going on here is she's trying to um break our normal way of thinking and have us look at things from a different point of view um that that's what i get from this anyway um She's become a lot more discriminating in, in, in her old age, given the fact that contradictory statements seem to be uh, the political um, uh, <laughs> fair at this stage of the game. But she would actually she would do, you know, these multicolored uh, backgrounds and post these things as part of her exhibitions. Um, okay, abuse of power comes as no comes as no surprise. Um, this is Lady Pink, who was a graffiti artist. She was part part of the group of of people like um, uh, Penny Sharp and and. Uh, well, uh, there there were a bunch of people along with Basquiat, um, and also admired her because she was getting out there. She was jumping jumping into um, places and risking getting arrested and things like that. Uh, so Lady Pink is still uh, functioning. She, if you if you look at the the small square, the small rectangle that's up on the top, that's her um, recently in uh, 2019. Okay, so here's one of, of the um, inflammatory statements, the essays that she put out there, don't talk down to me, don't be polite to me. Don't try to make me feel nice. <laughs> Don't relax. I'll cut that smile off your face. You think I don't know what's going on. You think I'm afraid to react. The joke is on you. I'm biding my time. Well, okay. Before galleries were vying to show her work, Jenny Holzer associated herself with by taking uh, to the streets in a uh, DIY approach. 
under cover of night, adhesive in hand, plastered multicolored inflammatory essays from 1979 to 82 around New York City neighborhoods, um, Soho and, and, and such. The messages contained within were a series of the series of text-based um, posters. It was good encouraging practice to start out illegally um, because when I when I could realize then I could realize anything I wanted to do uh, wanted to get done to the limits of my endurance and stealth. But even the best criminals get caught if they stay at the stay in the game long enough. Holser is no exception. During um, one 3 a.m. run in Soho, she was apprehended by the police and put in the back of the squad car. I launched into a rambling explanation, and they decided I, I was not worth keeping, she recalled in a 2016 New York Times story. I was dripping uh, so much wheat paste, they probably didn't want me on their back seat much longer. Okay, so she was in good company at the time. The Gorilla Girls were another group. Um, um, certain public displays of art uh, don't aim at connecting with masses so much as critiquing the art world from the inside out. Um, in 1985, a group of vigilante, uh, vigilantes armed with wheat paste and posters and wearing gorilla masks took to the streets of New York City. The Gorilla Girls, as they called themselves, was a collective set, set out to shame the art world for its underrepresentation of women artists. Its posters and stickers specifically named galleries and exhibitions, providing numerical evidence of gender, gen, gender discrimination. Um, you know, there, there's one of these posters in here, uh, do women have to be naked to get into the Metropolitan Museum? Um, so, Hulser was in good company. It all has to burn. It's going to blaze. It is filthy and can't be saved. A couple of good things will burn with the rest, but it's okay. Every, every piece is part of the ugly whole. Everything conspires to keep you hungry and afraid for your babies. Don't wait any longer. Waiting is weakness. Weakness is slavery. Burn down the system. <laughs> that has no place for you. Rise triumphant from the ashes. Fire purifies and releases energy. Fire gives heat and light. Let fire be the celebration of your deliverance. <laughs> lightning strike. Let lightning strike. Let the flames devour the enemy. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, these, these essays are, are, you know, on the one hand, hitting on some heavy duty truths that she was, that she was dealing with and hysterical at the same time. Okay. Barbara Kruger, another another fellow collab um, uh, teammate. I shop, therefore I am. Your body is a battleground. Uh, these these pieces are really, you know, they are just so to the point. It's a, a credit card size sign. Thinking of you. And this one's to the point. Okay. 
uh, crack is whack, inspired by his friend's struggle with uh, drug addiction and his own frustrations with the government's insufficient response. Keith Haring painted a uh, wall without permission and subsequently was arrested, fined, and faced jail time. The mural received such positive reception from the public that the charges against the artist were dropped and the artwork became a symbol. It is in your self-interest to find a way to be very tender. So there's this mixture in Hulser's work of the very intimate, um, uh, personal, and the political and social, um, there is there is this back and forth that's going on. And she did this whole series of of theater marquees in the in the eighties. I believe I believe this was I I don't have the dates on this. Raise boys and girls the same way. Savor kindness because cruelty is always possible later. <laughs> so in 1990, you know, Larry, yes, a lot of these remind me of Mark Twain's, um, uh, you know, quotes because we did that program on Mark Twain, uh, and yes. so many of them, uh, he would have probably. <laughs> Loved every second of this. I think I think they would have they would have uh, had had a good conversation. Yes. <laughs> I would want it videotaped. <laughs> so in in Sorry. 1990, you, no, it's okay. Thank you, Joe. Uh, in 1990, Jenny Hulser was was chosen to represent the United States at the Venice Biennale. In fact, the, the 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 rebel was brought into into the pavilion, um, and and the, you know these life pieces. You know, I'm I'm showing you these things in static form. You really have to see them. They flicker and 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 uh, scroll through at different speeds, and and there's reflections and all kinds of crazy things that go on with them. One of the things that Hulser says is I'd never know what these things are going to actually do until I get them installed and see what they're see what it's like. She couldn't really anticipate what that upside down reflection was going to do to this piece. Um, so basically, there there are, you know, scrolls going on of from different dates and different different. Um, gatherings of phrases that she's put together and you know fed into this machine again this is from the venice biennale and she um chose materials that would be um from the area kind of you know th this um the Carved um, granite in in inlays in the floor, uh, and and the benches. You can't really see the benches, but the benches all have phrases on them too. You shouldn't be shot at school. Vote urgent, urgently, November 6th. This was from um, 2020. Enough said. Okay. This is a series of redaction paintings that that she did that that were exhibited in, in a couple of galleries um 
throughout the world. And these are from uh, redacted um, uh, painting um, papers that, that she got through the Freedom of Information Act. Um, basically, they were um, uh, patient interviews, I mean, prisoner interviews and, and uh, statements that that were redacted before they were released and she used them as the basis for this series of kind of minimalist paintings with liberty and justice in a dream i saw a way to survive and you were full of joy so this is this piece was from uh, the Texas Contemporary Art Museum uh, in Austin. Um, and that that statement, I'm not sure who the poet was that she got that from. Uh, I should have done a little bit more research, but I smell you on my clothes. Designer collaborating with artists on uh, collection pieces, advertising, and store design is quite common nowadays. When Helmut Lang and Jenny Holzer came together to create I Smell You on My Clothes, an installation uh, for the 1996 um, Florence Biennale. We defend words as deeds of conviction, deeds of hope, deeds of mutual respect, and incitement to peace. This is by Andrew Solomon, uh, projection created by Jenny Halser and her technicians, who she's got plenty of. Ah, uh, and this is a, another Barbara Kruger. I love, I love her stuff. I mean, belief and doubt equal sanity. Art is as heavy as sorrow, as light as a breeze, as bright as an idea, as pretty as a picture, as funny as money, and as fugitive as fraud. <laughs> who will write the history of tears prejudices are the most difficult to eradicate from the heart whose soil has never been loosened or fertilized by education they grow there firm as weeds among stones. Education is the ability to listen to almost anything without losing your temper or your self-confidence. Empathy can change the world. Democracy cannot thrive where power remains unchecked. Again, this is on the first one. Lack of charisma can be fatal. <laughs> uh, okay. So this this whole series was from the 2020 uh, election cycle. Uh, vote early, vote joyously, vote for your health, vote to live, vote for those lost, vote since you can, vote early, vote like your life depends on it. It does. 
truth is powerful and will prevail. So vote. <laughs> um, now, I'm going to say, you know, Jenny Holzer's international reputation is is backed up by installations all over the world. She has traveled from the United throughout the United States, Europe, um, I, I you know Asia. Um, there have been pieces, you know, in museums and on museums. Um, uh, there's there's a whole series that she did on the Arno River on the on the uh, wall of the Arno River, which was really fabulous. I you know I I just couldn't shove everything in here that that's that's that she's done. But what I'll say is you can go to her website. Uh, which is projectsjennyholster.com and and tune in there. You can also go and see this show at, at the Guggenheim. Um, our enemies act without conscience. We must not. So vote for the vote for a future we might survive. Uh, so that's about all I have to say about Jenny Holzer, except I recommend that you go and, and see her show at the Guggenheim. And um, in two weeks, we're going to be, let's see, what do I have? It's going to be um, April 5th. I'm going to do Sonia Delaunay that there's a show on in the city of her work. And so that's it. Oh, you're- Any question? Uh, oh. No. Okay, Larry, that was really interesting. Yeah. And if you're still interested <laughs> in these things, I highly recommend Googling <laughs> Mark Twain quotes. <laughs> older, but my God, that's still relevant. Um, all right, everyone. Have a good weekend, even though it might rain. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.